Nobody wants bubbles or voids in their cured product, unless, of course, that product is a foam. Bubbles and voids in cured products can create multiple issues in performance and stability. Voids can weaken materials and create leaks and bond lines. Water vapor can collect and condense, leading to corrosion. This video explains the causes of void formation and the best practices to mitigate these issues through vacuum de-airing. The most common sources of voids come from manually mixing of two-part products, from air trapped under components during dispensing, from using air pressure to pump silicones, and from moisture coming out of substrates during heat cure. The best way to prevent void formation in cured products is to avoid mixing air into the materials during the mixing process. One method to achieve this is to use a static mixer when dispensing two-part materials. Static mixers can reduce the amount of air incorporated into a product during mixing. Air voids can also become trapped under boards and components during the dispensing process. A technique to prevent this from occurring is to tilt the part at an angle during dispense while filling from the bottom. This will allow material to flow and fill the entire space, preventing void formation. Another process that can create voids is the utilization of air pressure during pumping and dispense. Applying air pressure directly on silicone products without a barrier can allow air to be absorbed by the silicone when under pressure. After the pressure is released, the dissolved air can come out as bubbles, which can create voids during the curing process. To mitigate this, best practice is to not use air pressure in direct contact with silicones. Common methods to achieve this are by using plungers in cartridges and bladder bags in pails. If air pressure must be used directly on the product, keep the pressure as low as possible. Absorbed water in substrates can also create issues in void formation on cured products. Substrate materials like cast aluminum and nylon can absorb a lot of water. In some rare cases, if this water is not removed, the water could boil out of the substrate during curing at temperatures greater than 100 C. This water vapor can create voids in the silicone product during curing. When you cannot eliminate the sources of bubbles before or during dispense, you may need to use vacuum de-airing to remove them before curing. Vacuum de-airing is the process of using a vacuum system to reduce air pressure in a chamber. When uncured products are placed in this low pressure chamber, bubbles migrate out of the product. This process can be simple, but there are a few considerations. The purpose of de-airing is to get dissolved gases and bubbles out of a material prior to curing. The three key variables that impact the speed of this process are the material's viscosity, the depth of material being de-aired, and vacuum strength. The material's viscosity and the depth of the material being de-aired are interdependent so are typically considered together. When looking at viscosity and material depth, most materials with viscosities below 5,000 centipoise will self-de-air within a few minutes. However, products with very short working times or that skin over very fast may not allow enough time for all bubbles to reach the surface. This becomes even more apparent when cure depth increases. Vacuum de-airing can help aid the de-airing process for products with short working times but is limited to a depth of around 15 centimeters. Products with viscosities above 5,000 centipoise will not self-de-air, so vacuum de-airing is necessary. This process will also be slower due to the higher viscosity, making it more difficult for the vacuum to pull the air from the system. This can be sped up with a stronger vacuum, but de-airing will only be effective to a depth of about five to 10 centimeters. If the de-airing rate is too low or the depth of material too large, bubbles can remain in the cured product. Lowering the viscosity of a material can increase the de-airing speed and depth. For many materials, viscosity can be reduced by increasing their temperature through heating. A household example of this is honey, which is very viscous. It flows when it's heated. A silicone's viscosity, however, only slightly decreases at elevated temperatures. Heating a liquid silicone will lower the viscosity and allow it to flow faster, but not a significant amount. So this method of viscosity reduction is not that useful with silicone products. 
De-airing large containers like pails, drums, or cartridges has limitations as well. Attempting to de-air these large package sizes, even for long periods of time, will be ineffective and will only de-air the top layer of the product. This is also the case for very high viscosity, non-flow, and non-slump products. The viscosity of those products is too high to enable de-airing. When de-airing, the stronger the vacuum that is applied, the faster air will evacuate the system. Sea level atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, and de-airing often starts once the pressure reaches 150 millimeters of mercury, and is usually completed quickly when pressures reach 100 millimeters of mercury. How fast the chamber reaches these pressures depends on the chamber size and vacuum strength. A common concern is that too much vacuum de-airing will remove ingredients and impact final product properties. This is very unlikely, and most products can be held at low pressures for extended periods of time without impact. In this example, on the left is a dielectric gel silicone, and on the right is water. At the beginning of the video, you can see that at 150 millimeters of mercury, the silicone begins to de-air and continues as the pressure drops to 70 millimeters of mercury. As the pressure drops below 70 millimeters of mercury, the silicone has completely de-aired, but the water begins to boil. As the pressure continues to drop to two millimeters of mercury, the water continues to boil and the silicone shows few to no bubbles forming. Moisture cure products, however, could have important components removed at low pressures. These products rarely need de-airing, but if de-airing is necessary, a maximum vacuum level of 100 millimeters of mercury should be used. As the pressure in the vacuum chamber decreases, bubbles in the silicone will get larger and rise to the surface. If the material has a lot of air, it will appear to froth or foam. This is normal and typically means you are at a good vacuum level for de-airing. The froth will rise and then collapse, and once it has collapsed, de-airing is complete. There may still be a few bubbles coming out of the silicone after this point. These bubbles will dissipate once air is released back into the chamber and won't have an impact on the material performance. For some products, foaming up can occur at a much greater degree than others. Dowsil Silgard 184, for example, will increase in volume by a factor of eight to 10 during de-airing. Due to this, 184 can only be de-aired in thin sections or in containers with a large headspace. In practice, be sure to initially de-air your product in a container with extra headspace. Examples of vacuum de-airing up to this point have been on products prior to their application in a device. Alternatively, material can be dispensed on parts prior to de-airing and the entire part can be de-aired. This is extremely useful in removing air voids under small components and circuit boards. To avoid overflow when de-airing parts, it is often best to partially fill a part, de-air, then repeat until the fill is complete. This allows foaming to be controlled in thinner sections, preventing overflow. Any trapped air under components should be removed during the first de-air. It may not be necessary to repeat the de-airing process for the subsequent layers since the component should be encapsulated by the first layer. In manufacturing, it is also possible to dispense material directly onto a part inside a vacuum chamber. This is called dispensing under vacuum. With this process, the applied silicone material almost instantly de-airs as it is filling, and there typically is no bubbling or foaming. Once the part is filled, it can be removed from the vacuum chamber. Vacuum de-airing is a common practice. Removal of entrapped air in liquid silicone allows for better durability and performance on electronic devices. Devices that may be sensitive to voids or have small spaces such as circuit components and wire windings also benefit from the de-airing process. Under vacuum, silicone products will fill hard to reach confined spaces, protecting devices and components. The vacuum de-airing process is dependent on material properties device geometry, and vacuum equipment performance. This process can be optimized for a large array of material types and device architectures. 